This video covers simulation and particle distance. You can use any file to follow along, but the files I'm using are available via the close set link in the video description below. I have closed my library here by clicking the arrow in the top right hand corner, or you can do it with the hotkey Y on your keyboard. I've also made my window the 3D window only with this button in the bottom right. For this file, you only need the 3D window. To turn simulation on, click the down arrow button in the 3D window here. The hotkey for simulation is the spacebar. I'm sure many of you are Adobe users who might be in the habit of using the spacebar to pan. If you find that you accidentally turn simulation on a lot and you'd like to disable or change this hotkey, please refer to our user settings video on how to change shortcuts. When I turn simulation on, my tablecloth pattern that is a flat rectangle falls on my table. When simulation is on, you'll notice the down arrow in the toolbar turns blue. This is the first sign you have simulation on. The second sign will be that the fan on your computer may start running. When simulation is on, your computer is making constant calculations to apply gravity to the properties of your fabric. This requires a lot of computing power. Therefore, you should get in the habit of using simulation to drape your garment, and once your garment has finished draping, you should turn simulation off again. When simulation is on, the main selection tool in 3D, the Select Move tool, changes icons from a little crosshairs mark to a hand. Now when I select my pattern, my hand tool allows me to move my garment, or in this case my tablecloth, just as I would in real life. There are a few differences when moving things with your hand tool versus real life. Firstly, the hand tool will allow you to pull things up and down or left and right, but it cannot pull toward or away from you. If you want to pull toward yourself, you'll need to rotate your view so that toward becomes left or right. The other difference in using the hand tool is that in the 3D world, everything is made of mesh. This is true of my garment as well as any avatars. Here my table is my avatar. You can see the mesh when I set my display views to mesh mode. In Clo, mesh is triangular by default because it allows for softer curves when fabric drapes over the human form. This default setting can be changed in your user settings or manually by pattern piece in the property editor. The alternative is a quad mesh or rectangular mesh, which is the standard for hard 3D modeling software. It's important to note that these objects are made of mesh because that means in 3D they can potentially pass through each other. Unlike in real life where your garment cannot easily penetrate your body, in 3D if you pull hard enough with your hand tool, you can entangle the mesh of your avatar and the mesh of your garment. We call this collision. The best way to avoid this when using the hand tool is to get in the habit of pulling up and away from the avatar or other garments. For example here, if I want to even out my tablecloth, in real life I might pull this end down. In Clo, I'm going to gently pull it up and over so as not to pull it directly into my table. You also start to learn just how forceful or gentle you need to be in 3D. I'm in a file we often use for training that's a game for practicing moving with simulation on. The main things to remember are that you can't pull things toward and away from you with simulation on. You always need to constantly check your perspective by rotating around the 3D window. Your depth perception is a bit off in 3D, and there aren't as many cues as there are in the real world to where things are. It takes some getting used to. Turning simulation off will effectively pause the game by freezing your patterns where they are. You may notice if you click on them in this state, you get your gizmo. And if you click and drag them, this is the equivalent of using the yellow square on your gizmo. If you've not learned about the gizmo, refer back to our avatar and arrangement video. The purpose here is to move things using your hand tool while simulation is on. If you have paused to rotate and would like to continue, click down on your pattern and hold before turning simulation back on with the space bar. This will allow you to be holding the pattern when simulation comes back on. Otherwise, your pattern will fall to the ground where it is. There are currently four kinds of simulation in Clo 5.1. If you click and hold the simulation icon in the toolbar, you'll get a drop-down menu for all the modes of simulation. 
Normal simulation should be the mode you're most familiar with at this point. This is the default working simulation. The simulation arrow turns solid blue when normal simulation is on. In normal simulation, your speed should be relatively fast with your garments in low resolution. Of course, simulation speed depends on the power of your computer, but you can see here that I'm working in real time and my garment moves pretty similarly to the real world. You'll see if I delete her pant, the simulation will work even faster. The more things you have in the 3D window, the more calculations Clo has to do and the slower the simulation runs. The other working simulation mode is GPU. When GPU simulation is on, you will have a blue arrow outline as the icon. This option may not show up for you if you do not have a dedicated graphics card. GPU simulation means the simulation speed is running off your graphics card rather than your CPU, or the main processor of your computer. This is the fastest simulation and is useful especially with large garments like bridal or home goods, when you want to be able to move things quickly with simulation on. This mode should be used during the draft phase of your garment because it affects the collision thickness of your pattern pieces, meaning the invisible buffer around them, so it's not ideal to use on garments with many layers. The other two modes of simulation are meant to be used when the garment is finished and there's no more adjusting to do with the hand tool. Complete is a stable simulation that's primarily used when doing animations. When complete simulation is on, the icon will be a double red arrow. Clo has plans to remove this simulation from the drop-down menu to make the simulation options more concise, but it would still be available for animation mode. I'm not sure if or when this will go into effect. Lastly is complete nonlinear simulation. This mode is also for final garments that are in high resolution. This is the most accurate simulation for fitting and drape. When complete nonlinear simulation is on, the icon will be the same double red arrows as complete, but with a red line underscoring it. This is the default mode when you click the high res garment button. This mode ensures that the drape of the fabric represents the accurate retention of the garment so that it falls but also springs back as it would in real life. When using this mode, you don't want to pull on things with the hand tool, but allow everything time to drape and relax on its own until the garment stops moving, then turn simulation off. As discussed earlier in this video, everything in 3D is made of mesh. When we talk about resolution in Clo, we're talking about a few different settings, but the most important aspect is particle distance. Particle distance is the distance between the vertices of the mesh. The default working particle distance in Clo is 20, which means each vertex of the mesh is 20 millimeters apart. Particle distance is a property of the pattern pieces. You can change it on individual pattern pieces by selecting the pattern and changing it in the property editor. You will see particle distance just under simulation properties. You may notice in this file I have square patterns draped over these columns. The corners of the columns are showing through. This has to do with the particle distance. The corners or edges of the column are hitting holes in the triangles of the mesh, which is making the column show through. You may also notice occasionally in the 2D window, the fill color of your pattern pieces might not match the pattern edge. This also has to do with particle distance. Neither of these things are of any concern and will go away when you put your garment in high res when it's finished. But I'm going to show you right now what happens if I change the particle distance of one of these patterns. The default particle distance for high resolution is 5 millimeters. You'll see when I simulate now, the pattern I changed to 5 millimeters will now fill in the holes where the column was showing, and the wrinkles will become more realistic and defined. Here we have a garment where different patterns are in a different particle distance. The skirt is set to 75, which is why it looks like crumpled paper. The rest of the bodice is set to 20, and the neckband is set to 5. You'll notice when I turn simulation on, the skirt will move incredibly fast. Particle distance directly affects the simulation speed. The higher the particle distance, the fewer vertices of the mesh there are, and therefore Clo is doing fewer calculations for gravity. This is why our default particle distance is 20. This allows you to get a decent looking garment while also keeping the simulation speed fast while working. If you don't have the GPU simulation option, Another option for speeding up simulation with really large pattern pieces might be to put your particle distance above 20.
I'm going to set my skirt to 20 now and check the simulation speed. You can see my garment still moves plenty fast even though my net trim is set to 5. This is normal. In Clo, it's best practice to set pattern pieces that are smaller than your hand in width or length to a lower particle distance, even while you're working. It shouldn't slow your simulation down too much, if at all, and it will help make sure those smaller pieces don't collide with other patterns. When there is less mesh and the mesh is too open, a small pattern piece is more likely to entangle with other patterns. Here my neck trim is on fold at the top. At 5 particle distance, I don't have any issues with the inside and outside of the trim fighting each other. But if I put this distance up to 20, as soon as I turn simulation on, you'll see the inside and outside start to collide with each other. The gray is the backside of my fabric coming through the top of the neck trim. That being said, it's also possible you might want to set your pattern to be less than 5 if it's really small and you're not getting the definition that you need. The first time you do this, you'll get a pop-up warning you. Don't be alarmed, you can ignore the pop-up. Just be mindful that you won't want to do this for patterns unless they're very small, like maybe the size of a coin. Now I'm going to put all my pattern pieces down to 5 particle distance. After you lower the particle distance, you may notice your garment looking kind of pebbly like hammered metal. You always need to simulate after changing the particle distance to let the garment redrape. Now if I lift up my skirt, you'll see the simulation speed is much slower. You'll also see the elastic smocking in my waistband is significantly different in a lower particle distance. Anything with gathers, lots of wrinkles, um, elastic, will look much better when you change the particle distance. Don't feel like you have to do this while working. If you want, you can do it to check that you're happy with what the gathers look like or the elastic then you can change the particle distance back and keep working. To be clear, people often think particle distance changes the drape of the fabric. This isn't true. The drape of the fabric is determined by the fabric's physical properties. These are constant. However, the look of the drape will be affected by the particle distance because the edges of the fabric can't give you the smooth, realistic edge if the mesh is too big. This is why we recommend conducting any virtual fittings when the garment is in high resolution and using our most accurate simulation mode for the fabric drape, which is complete nonlinear. I mentioned there are a few different settings that go into a high resolution garment. Particle distance is one. The other factor is how closely the garment touches itself and the avatar. We talked about collision in 3D. To help avoid collision and keep the simulation as stable as possible while you're working, all the pattern pieces and the avatar have invisible buffers around them. Think of these like little force fields that protect the patterns. The invisible buffer around the pattern pieces is called additional thickness collision, or collision thickness. The default setting for this is 2.5 millimeters. You can access and change it by selecting a pattern and typing in the property editor. Don't confuse this with additional thickness rendered that's just below it. That's something different and that setting by default is zero. The invisible buffer around the avatar is called skin offset. You can adjust this by selecting the avatar and changing skin offset in the property editor. The default for the avatar is 3 millimeters. To simplify the process of putting your garment into high res, we have provided a button called high res garment. It's in the 3D toolbar, the little t-shirt that looks like it has tighter mesh. You may need to expand your 3D window to see it. If you're on a small laptop, especially a Mac, I highly recommend changing your toolbar layout for the toolbars to be on the sides of each window. It will allow you to see all your tools without having to expand your windows. Check out our user settings video to change this. When you click the high res garment button, you get this pop-up. These are the default settings that you'll have when you first download the software. All patterns larger than 5 particle distance will be brought down to 5. This won't affect any pattern pieces that you have that are already smaller than 5. The skin offset will be brought down to 0. This is a slightly debated setting. I like to set this to 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters. It's not enough to ever notice, and there's the rare occasion with something like a spaghetti strap that's really skinny where it might start to seep into the avatar if there's no buffer at all. Once you set these settings, you can forget about them because they'll save with the program. 
So I like to do it once and never think about it, but I also advise new users to cross that bridge if they get to it. Definitely not everyone uses the same setting and to use zero as the skin offset is totally fine. Lastly is the collision thickness or the invisible buffer around the pattern pieces. The default is to bring this down from 2.5 to one millimeter. This means one millimeter between your patterns and your avatar or your patterns and each other. As I mentioned in the simulation section, the default mode for high res is complete nonlinear simulation. This will be slower than normal, and if your computer is very basic, you may not like using it, but it's what we recommend for the most accurate drape and fit for your completed garment. After you say OK, it'll take a few seconds to load all of those settings. Then you'll need to simulate one last time to allow your garment to drape in high res. If you ever have a high-res garment that you want to make edits to, you can use our low-res garment button to bring all of those same settings back to your working settings. The one thing to be mindful of is any pattern pieces that you want to stay set to 5 particle distance, you may want to adjust those manually in the property editor after clicking the low-res garment button, but before you simulate. This will avoid things like the neck trim on the dress getting entangled.